Welcome back. Well, we've discussed very extensively what MEV is previously. I might have not been crystal clear with you of why it matters to security. And in this segment of the lecture, we'll be discussing BEV forking or mine extractable value forking and chain reorganizations. So the dangers of naively maximizing MEV or basically extracting MEV is the following. So let's assume we have here a block B1, right? So this is a, a particular block and let's assume that there's a, an honest miner, he uh, or she mines block B2 and there's an MEV opportunity in this very block. There might also be a malicious miner and this malicious miner would like to extract this uh, MEV opportunity, right? So now the question is for the honest miner, well, the honest miner would like to continue mining on B3. So this is certainly one case, but um, this, mines, this means that the malicious miner will basically forfeit the previous MEV opportunity. And why would the miner do that? Why would the adversary just give this MEV opportunity to this honest miner of this other block? doesn't make much financial sense. It's not very rational. It's not a very rational thing to do. Well, depends at least on the value of the MEV opportunity. So naturally here, it might happen that the adversary keep mining and keeps mining on block C2, because this is the rational thing to do in order to attract the most value out of the block might. So you can see here the MEV miner or the adversary miner basically extending C3 instead of uh, continuing on the honest chain B2. So and then again, right, there might be the case, well, the malicious miner uh, could mine on, on C4 uh, to continue uh, increasing basically its, its, uh, its, uh, its chain and the honest miner could, could continue on B4 or on C4 so that's really up to the um, up to the honest miner, but overall the message, the high level message here is that um, this MEV opportunity, right? This opportunity here creates a competition among miners to include this very opportunity, um, because it could be mined in any block, but it can only be mined in a single block, not in multiple blocks at the same time. So what we observe is, is there's a potential waste for comp of computational power which then increases the stale block rate and this increases the risks of double spending and selfish mining to very security relevant concepts that we have discussed in this lecture already. Now what you can do is to quantify how important this threat of mine extractable value actually is. You can quantify um, the optimal adversary strategy in, a, in, a, in a, for example, a Nakamoto consensus blockchain. So what related work has done is to instantiate a proof of work blockchain with various network and consensus layer parameters to extract the stale block rate. So um, as you might know, the stale block rate in, in Bitcoin is uh, on the order of a percent, uh, depending on the, on the state, obviously. In Ethereum, the uh, stale block rate was measured between, I think, 5 and, and 7% so far. Um, but uh, please don't quote me on that. So this is roughly the, the order of magnitude that I'm aware of. Um, and what we can then do is we can model the blockchain as a Markov decision process. So a Markov decision process is a special instance of a Markov chain, but with an added action and state space. So and there we can um, instantiate a few attacks, for example, the selfish mining or the double spending attacks that we've discussed earlier. And the Markov decision process, when you solve this process, you will get a few set of, uh, you get a set of optimal strategies to perform depending on the state. So um, this is the output basically of the, of the Markov decision process. So what I would like to show you is really how to model a blockchain in an MDP, in the Markov decision process. I think this is probably the, the, the most interesting takeaway message for, for this segment of the lecture. So let's assume here we have a, um, an honest chain, right? So this is a, just a, a regular uh, honest chain where a transaction pays a vendor. 
So, and let's assume that in parallel, an adversary is mining a secret chain here, this red one, which is not public yet. And the, uh, there's a transaction that pays the adversary. And this transaction is a double spend transaction, uh, which is in conflict with the green transaction, right? So these two transactions here, they cannot be mined together at the same time in the blockchain because they're conflicting each other. So in an MDP, what we can now do is we can model the adversarial chain here as the length uh, three and the honest chain as the length one. So three is the architecture chain, one is the honest chain. And the adversary now can choose an action. So the adversary can choose what to do. So let's assume that the adversary will override the honest chain. Overriding means the adversary will publish two blocks, so B1 and B2 prime, right? And because B1 and B2 prime are a longer chain than B1, uh, this will override the main chain. So the main chain is now uh, is now this construct here, and it's no longer this one, right? This is overridden. It's this, uh, it's no longer a valid longest chain. And naturally, now the the honest network will continue mining uh, on B two prime, but the adversary got a profit, right? The adversary got the block reward for these two blocks plus the double spend uh, reward for this very transaction. Well, at least as long as the miner accepted here the, the transaction after one block confirmation. But what you can see is here, uh, we have a state space, right? This is like three one in this particular case. We have an action space. So we had the action override, for instance. The adversary could have also waited. This is another action. And we got a reward that we can specify. So the reward was two block rewards plus a double spending value. Right. So I think this is really a, a quite a cool tool uh, to model um, how a blockchain would operate. And once you have this model, you can always plug in uh, additional parameters, additional rewards. And um, we try to quantify um, to what degree uh, minor extractable value would affect the security of a chain. So what would be a, the optimal strategy for a miner to perform mining in the presence of a minor extractable value reward? So we have done this um, quantitatively, which you can, you can see in this, in this particular paper. But what we have seen, so just to give you an example, is that if a ten, given a 10% hash rate miner, right, which is, which is, it's a big miner, but it's not like the biggest, right? If there's a 4x average block reward, I mean, if there's an MEV opportunity that's 4x the average block reward, then this 10% hash rate miner will be incentivized to fork the chain. And this is really, this, this is dangerous because um, we, will, we will see uh, through, I mean, if, if the miners are getting more aware that this can be, this can be performed on the, on the mining level, right? If you can basically design an algorithm, I mean, for example, with MDP, you could design an algorithm that, that selects your optimal adversary strategies. <clears throat> and you automate this in the uh, in the uh, um, in the uh, mining software, for example, in Geth, uh, then we might see many more uh, state blocks, and and the, the chain security will significantly deteriorate. And this example is just like a, a small miner with ten percent and a four x uh, block reward MEV opportunity. Um, and alarmingly, what we have seen is like um, MEV opportunities beyond 800x the block reward. So you can imagine um, what would happen. Thank you very much. I don't want to make you afraid, uh, but MEV is a security concern and uh, it's not wise to ignore uh, the, the dire consequences of rationality, especially once miners have potentially access to um, automated forking software that is like optimally designed. Uh, so an MDP might be one avenue towards this goal. It's uh, certainly not flawless, but um, yeah, we should, we should be on the lookout and try to minimize MAV and prevent security dangers on, on our well-advancing DeFi ecosystem.